the Saab JAS-39 Gripen is a Swedish fighter aircraft that has captured the imagination of aviation enthusiasts and military experts alike. With its sleek design, advanced technology, and remarkable performance, the Gripen has earned a reputation as one of the most capable and versatile multi-role combat aircraft in the world. The Gripen, which means Griffin in English, resulted from Sweden's ambitious efforts to maintain a domestic aerospace industry and develop a modern fighter aircraft for its armed forces. The origins of the Gripen project can be traced back to the 1970s, when Sweden sought a replacement for its aging fleet of Saab 35 Draken and Saab 37 Viggen fighters. In response to the need for a new fighter, the Swedish government initiated the development of the Gripen in 1979. The project was an ambitious undertaking, driven by the desire to create a cost-effective, adaptable, and high-performance fighter aircraft that could meet the evolving needs of the Swedish Air Force. The Gripen's development was characterized by a strong emphasis on collaboration between the Swedish aerospace industry and international partners played a pivotal role in shaping the aircraft's success. The commander of Sweden's Air Force, Mats Helgeson, recently made the bold statement that his country's Saab Gripen E fighter could beat Russia's formidable fleet of Sukhoi jets with none of the expensive stealth technology the U.S. relies on. Gripen especially the E-model, is designed to kill Sukhois. Helgeson told Ile at a presentation in Finland, where Sweden is trying to export the jets. The Gripen E doesn't incorporate stealth design characteristics. According to Saab, the rationale behind this choice is the rapidly evolving nature of software and hardware technologies, which they believe will make stealth aircraft increasingly detectable by radars. Given that modifying or reconfiguring an airframe is a complex and costly endeavor, Saab has opted to realign with the competition by relying on swiftly advancing technologies rather than stealth to gain an advantage in warfare. This approach includes a strong emphasis on advanced electronic warfare capabilities. The Gripen is engineered for swift deployment in the field particularly at austere bases, with an emphasis on minimal logistics requirements. A small team can effectively maintain it, ensuring rapid fighter servicing and regeneration capabilities. Meanwhile, Russia's Sukhoi fighters achieved legendary status for their ability to outmaneuver U.S. fighter jets in dogfights pull off dangerous and aggressive stunts in the air. But Gripen may have cracked the code. The Gripen can only carry a few weapons and has no real stealth. And it isn't the longest range, fastest, or even the cheapest jet. But it has a singular focus that makes it a nightmare for Russia's fighter jets. Justin Bronk, an aerial combat expert at the Royal United Services Institute, told Business Insider that, like the A-10 Warthog, built around a massive cannon the Gripen was built around electronic warfare. Virtually all modern jets conduct some degree of electronic warfare, but the Gripen E stands above the rest, according to Bronk. Gripen pilots don't like to show their cards by demonstrating the full power of the jets jamming in training, but the one time they did, it completely reversed the course of the mock battle in training, Bronx said. Several years ago, the Gripen pilots got tired of being made fun of by German Typhoon pilots and came to play with their wartime electronic warfare, which gave them a hell of a hard time, Bronx said. One of the Gripens was reportedly able to appear on the left wing of a Typhoon without being detected by using its extremely respected jamming ability, Bronx said. 
it would be fair to assume the Gripen is one of the most capable electronic warfighters out there, he said, adding that the Gripens that baffled the Typhoons were of the C or D series, which have much less powerful electronic warfare capabilities than the E series Gripens that Helgeson described. To defeat Russia's fearsome fighters and surface-to-air missiles, the U.S. has largely turned to stealth aircraft. Stealth costs a fortune and must be built into the shape of the plane. If Russia somehow cracks the code of detecting stealth-shaped fighters, the U.S.'s F-35, the most expensive weapon system in history, is cooked. But Saab took a different and cheaper approach to combating Russia's fighters and missiles by focusing on electronic attack, which gives them an advantage over stealth because they can evolve the software without a ground-up rebuild, according to Bach. Saab plans to update the software on the Gripen E every two years, giving it more flexibility to meet evolving challenges, according to Bronk. But Bronk noted one issue with electronic warfare. The problem with basing a survival strategy around an electronic warfare suite is that you don't really know if it's going to work, he said. Even if it does, it's going to be a constant battle between your adversary and you to get the edge on the enemy fighters as waveforms and attack methods continuously change. However, Sweden benefits from a Russian focus on U.S. fighters. Sweden is too small, really, to optimize your counter-electronic warfare capabilities against, Bronx said. If war broke out between Russia and the West, Russia would likely try its hardest to push back on U.S. electronic warfare rather than against Sweden's grip and E, of which there would only be a few dozen. The whole concept of the Gripen E is to operate in Swedish territory and take advantage of all sorts of uneven terrain under the cover of friendly surface-to-air missiles with a superb EW suite, which should, in theory, keep it safe from the majority of Russian missiles and air-to-air -air threats, Bronk said. Additionally, the Gripen E can fire almost any missile made in the US or Europe. If you couple a very effective radar with excellent EW and a Meteor, the most effective longest range air-to-air -air missile resistance against Russia's jammers, there's no reason not to assume it wouldn't be pretty damn effective, Bronk said. If you're a flanker pilot, it's probably a very scary thing to face.